Yeah, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Hangover Podcast with me, Siobhan Malcolm. Enjoy. The Hangover Exclusive Interview. Yes, it is what it is. Good afternoon to everybody watching the show right now. It happens to be the Hangover with me, the King Siobhan Malcolm. And well, today I happen to be having Babaluku. Yes, sir. What's up, brother? Not much, man. Thanks for having me in no the problem. building. No prop, no prop. Yeah. Nice yeah. to see you around. Hey, hey, you know, I've been laying low, but you know, it's nice to come out and communicate with the masses. <laughs> yes, that's what it is. Well, everybody watching the show right now. Babaluku just had his voices in the building. All you got to do, probably, if you want to talk to us, let us know what's going down. It's all pretty simple. Get into our Facebook. That is Hot 100. Live a space. UG. Also our Twitter at Hot 100 underscore UG. Don't forget my Twitter. King Chevron. That is K-I-N-G-S-H-O-V-A. And call us up on 075 23 minutes past the hour. That is of um, actually me day. And well, it's about that time. You know, today, basically, I need, you know, there's people who need some little advice on how to do stuff. Especially people coming up, the young cuts. Uh, you know, yes. how to, you know, come up in the industry. How to make the right moves. <laughs> To be, you know, the, you know, the right artists or the right rappers that probably they're thinking of, and uh, you know, that's what we're gonna be talking about. Basically, hit the Luga flow. Everybody's been asking themselves, you know, Luga flow. Where did he start up from? How yeah. did he come up? And basically, the general view of uh, basically that is hip hop in Uganda. Oh. But well, before we do that, nice to meet you. Hey, hey, hey! I'm here. You know, I'm this already from the beginning. Oh yeah, you know. Well, you came free, and uh, there was uh, some madness around here, man. You know. Yeah, you know. By the way, if you do know, hot whatever it is, being surrounded by, you know, the popo I was like, well, what's happening? I, I thought they thought they come for me. Yeah, I thought that's they why, raided how one. Yeah, you know? that's why the radio went off for some time, man. You know, the police was still out here. Uh, you know, scared. I was like, damn, I might go or something like that. I was like, oh god. Uh, thank God I'm still here. Nothing is going down. Yes, I'm still here. <laughs> That is crazy you know, stuff. How do you, what do you think? What do you care through? I mean, I thought it was hectic. You know, I mean, I've, I've been here a million times, but, but I had never know. seen that kind of like, you know, uh, you know, SWAT team, you know, yeah. all geared up, you know, yeah. and I'm like, man, what's happening? I'm like, there's some sort of revolution happening, <laughs> but I don't know if it's, you know. So you thought it was a revolution going down here? I mean, you know, Uganda's in our state, you know, <laughs> things pop up, you know, so I was just like, it was popping up at 100. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that's probably if you ask yourself, what's happening? The radio's off. It went off like for maybe a minute or so, man. I was shocked. I was scared out here, man. Police around here trying to do some crazy stuff. But anyway, let's forget about that a little bit. But well, anyway, tell me, how have you been generally, Baba? Yeah, I've been good, man. I've been good going through my graduation stages, you know, yeah. growing with a movement, growing with the entertainment industry, and definitely growing with the hearts of young people, you know, because that's why I'm in Africa most of the time, you know? Yeah. It's like cultivating, and so... I've been taking out time off. This was my season to kind of take time off. Oh, yeah? To reflect on, uh, you know, 10 years that we've been, you know, really supporting hip-hop in Uganda as young people. Oh, yeah. You know, so, you know, it's, it's just one of those moments, you know, after doing, a, you know, the big global indigenous hip-hop gatherings and celebrating, you know, the 10th annual hip-hop summit. Yeah. I wanted to take January off to just chill, you know what I mean, lay back for the first time because I've been coming to Uganda for the past eight years. And usually I'm in the field, you know, I'm going somewhere, I'm doing something, you know. Yeah. For a minute I was like, yo, you know, take a break, man. Maybe you learn something different. Maybe you pick up something new. So I'm actually in our stage, you know, just, you know, observing, learning, and definitely continuing to cultivate a new conversation for young people to grow hip-hop. Yes, that's what it is. Well, let's hit up some old jams. While we get back, we'll get to what brought us here. Luga Flow, Inspiration, and Hip-Hop in Uganda. The Hangover Exclusive Interview. When I look out the window, back at me, young, I'm trying to And in case you didn't know, I'm gonna let it all Yes, coming through. That is a lack of therapy coming up from young Nick Ruyonga. And uh, that is uh, the main man in Nick. But what do you think of this, Baba? I mean, the joint is, the jam is nice, you know, it's just one of those, you know, medley hip-hop joints that you just bob your head to, you know what I mean, yeah. and try to pick up the lyrical content of individuals who are spitting, you yeah. know what I mean, but, you know, Ryonga is nice, Young Nick is nice, you know, all those cats have been here for a second doing their thing, yeah. you know what I mean, I'm, and I've heard a few things of Enigma, so, you know, it's all, I mean, it's, it's a hip-hop jam, you know? Okay. One of those, it's actually a hip hop job more so for the heads. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I know what you're saying. So if you're a hip hop head, that's, that's your jam for sure. Yes, that's what it is. But hey, let's get to the point. Let's cut through to the chase and get to know what's going down. Yes, hip hop, it's been a long journey. 
especially yeah. you know in the country and uh, so many people have come so many people you know have done the thing you know so many people try to do everything to see that hip-hop it is like way is right now yeah you know you as a person you've been in the hip-hop you know world for you know some time i like to get to know especially for luga flow how does this whole luga flow thing come up because some people don't really know the background or the coming up of luga flow how who brought up this whole idea of luga flow and how did it get inspired in different artists right now doing luga flow i mean definitely at the end of the day you know we're in kampala we're in uganda we were born and raised here yeah you know what i mean and hip-hop found us right here on the ground yeah and at the, uh you know when, when you look at it when you take it back you know we all did hip-hop from our emulated context in the beginning yeah you know i mean i used to rap in english and that was my thing you know what i'm saying and you know i have my time with it yeah you know it wasn't until I got to Tanzania and kids were kicking it in Swahili. Oh, yeah. And then they actually challenged the crew that went there to represent, which was Bataka Squad at the time. You know, they're like, oh, what's up with these dudes from Uganda? They don't have anything like, you know, that's, that's their own. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that really kicked us in the butt. You know what I mean? It'd be like, yo, hold up. We're in a continent, bro. You know what I mean? Well, how can we be in a continent and not have something that looks like we look like? Yeah. You know, especially that conversation you have in the hood. You know how you chat with your boys with all our slang talk, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. How, how come we're not engaging in such, you know, to bring a colorful col uh, colorful content to the hip-hop scene in Uganda? So, hence the beginning of Luga Flow, you yeah. know what I mean? Luga yeah. Flow was definitely a movement that was inspired uh, by MCs in Tanzania. Oh, yeah? You know what I'm saying? So, we were, it was out of feeling guilty or feeling bad. You're like, what's happening, you know? It was, you guys are doing something in their own language. Uh, yeah, I'll call it an awakening. You oh, know, yeah. going out, or going beyond the borders and experiencing something new. Because before we left, we only knew what we knew. And yeah. we plugged into what we knew. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Doing but crossing in the border, yeah. But crossing the border challenged you. Because they're like, hold up. They nice, they're good, and they're spitting it in their own language. What's up with you? You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it was a huge challenge, and they didn't have to say it. Oh, yeah. You would just feel it as someone who loves hip-hop passionately. You would just be like, man, I got to try one day to get it in my own language, you know? I yeah. got to try to know a, a way to be able to represent this language so our people open up. I mean, remember the days when Hot, Hot 100 we, yeah. wasn't playing any local content. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And personally, I remember when we did a forum and we had Brother Isaac Melinda come out. Yeah. You know, we were really expressing the, important, the importance of being able to put on something that looked more Ugandan, that that would encourage and grow hip hop in Uganda. And yeah. so that's why I like when you talk about Hot 100, yeah. they, they've done a contribution by giving, you know, local Promoting dialect, it. yeah, exactly, and building our sin. So at the end of the day, from where we've come from, you know, the Luga Flow movement, you know, is definitely a seed grounded, you know, and pioneered by the Bataka legend, the recruit. Oh yeah. A lot of people which people which people were in that, you know, whole crew that, you know, started off, you know, Bataka. I mean the whole crew, the original heads a lot of people didn't see because we're all a bunch of young boys. Yeah. Matter of fact, we started up as jammed edition. And what okay. we used to do is go to schools and put on this little we were young. Yeah. But you know, we we put on school shows anyways, whatever. You know, yeah. pack ourselves in a van and go to Muyidi, go to Wudo, you know, go to all the schools. Doing it in English or Luga. <coughs> we we first did it in English, in English and doing cover songs, you know, yeah. of like Outcast and all these other casts that were coming out at the times. You know, but we went to Muyidi College, I would never forget that. Oh yeah. You know, and by that time we had just got back from Tanzania. And we had scripted some, you know, readers and rhymes in Luganda. Yeah. Man, when we did it in Luganda, the kids kept saying, bring back the guys who are rapping in Luganda. <laughs> I can never forget that moment. And that's the moment that kicked me off to stand proudly and say we must start rapping in our indigenous languages. Oh, yeah. yeah and so that, and probably maybe there is this feeling that, oh, you know, certain people have when you do something, especially in English, you're like, you're trying to show off, you're trying to do something that is not yours and all that. I mean, you got to understand, we're living in a society where we've been conditioned to think like other people, so we can't think for self. Yeah. That's a big problem with Ugandans. You okay. know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're always in an emulative context. You know, there's, there's something to do. I'm, I'm aspiring to be like his greatness. Yeah. But you have to be yourself to yourself, achieve your yeah, own greatness. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, you find out that a lot of our generation is actually in a terms where it's actually an emulating generation. Yeah. 
You know, we're not grounded. We're not proud of who we are. I can't tell you I'm a Muganda proudly. Yeah. If you met me, I, I'd rather tell you, like, yo, I'm cool. You know, I speak English. You know, and I'm like, hold up. You in Kampala, bro. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yes, that's right. It is. You're still riding on the blazing hot one. It's still going on. My main man, that is uh, Baba Luku in the building. But, well, let's go up and get some jams in the building. Well, this is uh, Kakubi Dale, the official remix. Abujule, yeah. Lerico, J. Sino, MC. Well, crazy, crazy stuff opening right here the Bees and Hot 21 minutes at top of the hour still going on with the hangover and maybe King. If you can't pick us up where you live, move. Yes, that's right. It is still going on with my main man, Babaluku, all right here in the building. But, well, we were talking about, you know, the coming off of, uh, you know, Luka Flow, that whole thing of, uh, you know, you know, going to, you know, that is Tanzania, getting inspired, you know, seeing guys doing their own thing. And you feel like you also need to do something of yourself, like something from you inside yeah. within. I mean, definitely, you know, that led us to a different place. Yeah. You know, where regardless of us not being able to do it right away, yeah. We're willing to be inspired to carry the conversation. Yeah. So every time we're gathered and congregated to really, you know, get into our acts of, you know, whatever it was singing or rapping or, you know, a lot of people, because we had a crew of a lot of young people. We had like, you know, Liberal Court G, you had uh, Peter Miles, you had Gento Mutume, you had Chaga, you had Momo MC, you had Crazy Native, you had Shillings, you had NTO, you had, we had a, a crew yeah. of young men who did anything. Thing. Yo, we did R&B, we did hip hop, we did rock, we did dance. We, we, you were like trying out everything. We that did you everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And at that time, we were one of the deadliest, youngest crew. Yeah. Because we were all lock locally branded, yeah. and we were willing to experiment and do anything. Okay. You know, and so by the time we're growing age up in hip hop, some of us, you know, we've done it all. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, you hang where you feel like your heart is. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And you stay solid with that. So I feel like, you know, all of us, you know, came from that ground and yeah. of really wanting to see hip hop that was more Ugandan. How far back was that? Man, I was like 11 years ago. I mean, this was 1995, 96. Yeah. You know, 97, 98. That's probably 14, 14 15 years. Yeah, there we go. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So at the end of the day, it's been a minute. A lot yeah. of these dudes have grown. They got wives and families, you yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, can't, I don't know, a couple of months ago, I so saw Shillings, actually. Uh, yeah. He's doing his thing, you know, on the low. And right now, people are still asking themselves, you know, what's happening? What happened to Babaluku? You know, it's been quite for a minute. You know, nobody knows where he is. And well, right, I guess right now, so many people are surprised to hear you on radio. And they're trying to get to know what's been happening with Babaluku. I mean, what's been happening is everything that's happening in hip-hop in Uganda. And, and that's steadying What do you mean by that? Yeah, that, that means... Staging a relevant platform yeah. that globally could be treaded for hip hop in Uganda to be respected. Oh yeah. You know, so there's two things. There's short time and real time. So I try to keep on the real time and short time could be handled by dudes who are looking for the commercial element. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. if you come with a conscious, you know, tip and you wanna understand the power of hip hop, the power of Luga Flow, yeah. the power of what has changed the face of hip hop in Uganda, you holla about Baluku. You know, I'm always online. I'm always traveling. I'm always everywhere representing Uganda internationally. Okay. You know what I'm saying? In, in some of the most relevant platforms that a lot of artists will never even touch. Yeah. Yeah. Well, interesting. And, uh, you know, going out to something else, you know, uh, you know, hip hop and basically Luga Flow. Right for now, it is where it is. And what do you see as a future for Luga Flow, basically? It's just beginning. You sure? You know, it needed lib need liberals. Yeah. And it opened up a gap for stakeholders. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We'll we, 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 we take you back. Before Luga Flow, you didn't find any local kid rapping. You know, you, Luganda, you, didn't, yeah. you, you didn't find, forget just Luganda, any local language. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So Luga Flow opened up a franchise Yeah. that a, a guy on a Rolex stand could do a Luga Flow album today. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A kid in the ghetto could tell you, I'm an MC and I got yeah. a single today. Yeah. But before that, everybody thought it could only be done in English. Yeah. So if I didn't go to school, I can't you really protect this platform. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so if you want to understand the power of what Luga Flow broke in Uganda and why we call it one of the most historical genres of music yeah. to ever hit Kampala, it opened up a platform for everyone to plug in. Yeah. You know, whether you went to school, whether you knew English, whether you were five years old, you can do something now you it. could get it done. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. now, you know, we opened up the gates for dudes to plug in. And everyone who's plugged in, 
they have experimented to find their worth. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. You got a brother like GNL, you know what I mean? Is celebrating his Luga Flow essence yeah. successfully. Yeah. You know, doing his thing. How could you debate? You know what I'm saying? Now, what other flow in Uganda is giving you a success story? You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, you know, when people are debating, forget debating who started Luga Flow. It's here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you find it interesting, build on it. If you want to plug in, you're welcome. Join it, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Instead of sitting there in this Wolokoso element, who started this? You know what I'm saying? All this stuff. You know what I'm saying? We didn't do it to oh, yeah. take credit. Oh, yeah. We did it for the people. Okay. And so for us, the success is now by saying, oh, Babaluku started Logo Flow. The success is in how many people are doing Logo Flow today? Yeah. How many homes is Logo Flow being played in today? So I mean, many. I'm on Hot 100. I, I remember days that Hot 100 would not talk about Logo Flow. Yeah. But today, you supporting young Logo Flow MCs and, and putting on a lot of young people to expose hip hop in a indigenous context. Yeah. You know, so at the end of the day, you know, you remember there's three kinds you can look about Baluku as. Yeah. You can look about Baluku the artist. I was like 10 years ago, man. I was an artist. I wanted to be that artist who got on the mic. I did that, <laughs> and I graduated. You know, and then there's Babaluku, the innovator, the platform creator. And then I started looking at Uganda. Hey, there's no conscious movements. There's no young people advocating and talking about themselves, their art, and their spirit, and why they do what they do. Yeah. And I said, let's start cultivating spaces that support young people to do this. I've took a million young kids in studios. You know what I'm saying? I've I've put a lot of young people on that are on a scene right now, yeah. and it's heavy on them because they don't know how to take it further. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you know, there's those three elements that people always, a lot of people ask me from an artist's perspective. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm a graduate. You know what I mean? I don't, come to, I don't have to come to Uganda and give you a mixtape. Yeah. That Those days are gone. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But yeah. <clears throat> I'll get on Hot 100 and share with you the history, the knowledge, the wisdom, and where we could take hip-hop forward. Yeah. Because I, as we speak, we got six, ten, seven-year-old beatboxers. Yeah. We got seven-year-old MCs. That's a generation we're cultivating for. You know, everything we're doing right now is for them. Yeah. You know, and so the mediocrity... In 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 a in a in a in, a, in, a, in, in those in the middle, and that's like you know the nineteen, the twenty, the twenty. You know who are deciding either. Yeah. Do I really want to MC? Do I just want to make a CD? Am I doing it for the fame? Do I just want to be known? You know that's their progression, and they'll figure out their direction in, in due time. Yeah, because we all went through that. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I trust it, I trust it, get as you can be a part of this one by getting to our Facebook page, Hot 100 Level Space UG, or still our Twitter at Hot 100 underscore UG, or probably my Twitter, King Shavon. Yes, let us know what's going down by, hey, right about us, about that time, we had up some old jams, and well, this one is all down by the main man, Sweet Bits, Chris Brown, and Ludacris. Happens to be every day is a birthday. Every day is your birthday and I hit the flow. Every day is your birthday and I hit the flow. Hit, hit the flow. I say hit the flow. Every day is your birthday and I hit the flow. Every day is your birthday and I hit the flow. Every day is your birthday and I hit the flow. Hit, hit the flow. And let's work. Let's work. Let's work. Let's work. Well, that is everyday birthday coming up from Swiss Beats, Chris Brown, and Ludacris. Opening Roddy on the Bees in Hot 100. Well, I guess right now my call lines are dead, but well, we'll be using our Facebook and Twitter. That is Hot 100 Living Space UG. Still our Twitter. That is a Hot 100 and this call UG. You'll probably get into my Twitter. Let me know what's happening. Twit me up at King Shavon. That is K-I-N-G-S-H-O-V-E-N. And well, we'll see how we get on with this one. Yes, that's, uh, you know, that's what it is. But well, still going down. We need to get to know, you know, what you think of, you know, as a person who has been in this game, you know, who's been doing it for quite, uh, you know, some time. What you think of uh, basically Ugandan hip hop, regardless, Luga Flow, or whatever. What you think of uh, Ugandan Luga Flow? And what, what future do you see after it? I mean, let me let me say hip hop in general. You know, I'll speak for hip hop in general before I take you to the Luga Flow future. Yeah. Uh, hip hop in general. People gotta understand when hip hop come to Uganda. You know, hip hop didn't come to Uganda. Hip hop was always in Uganda. Hip hop was always in Africa. Yeah. You know, it's just that our brothers in the in the Americas. You know, were able to reinterpret this gift yeah. and show us that it still was within us. So when we hear the hip hop side of the in, in the Bronx, you know, the original blueprint of hip hop is in Africa. It's yeah. in my culture. It's in a lot of other people's cultures. You know, and that's the notion of us being able to, you know, do all our cultural celebrations and have those recitals. Yeah. You know, that you know, we all plug in. You know, the Bagandas have the kagwa kagwa. You know, and all of that. So that's all our ancestral connection to hip-hop yeah you know what i'm saying and so at the end of the day 
you know, having his brothers in America, you know, show us, you know, that this well, thing yeah. was still here and it was a part of us and it had survived the slave, you know, transatlantic, you know, and, and for the 400 years of their condition, they still held it up, you know, to be able to come through as a form of expression for them. I think it was a good thing for Africa. So yeah. while hip hop was dying out in America, Africa was resurrecting hip hop, you know, so I feel like, you know, when you talk about hip hop in the continent, you know, it's actually hip hop reconnecting 360. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And 360 means coming back, coming back home. Yeah. You know, so hip hop is back home. And what does hip hop back home look like? You know, hip hop back home looks like the indigenous context to hip hop. It doesn't look like Lil Wayne. It doesn't look like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It doesn't look like 50. It doesn't look like anybody. It doesn't look yeah. like Rick Ross. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop back home looks like Babaluku. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop back home looks like any other cats. Hip hop back home looks like T Bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop back home looks like who? I mean, a lot of dudes who are crossing over to reconnect yeah. to their indigenous context and represent their people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We cannot all use the colonial language to communicate when we live in a continent where our ancestors bred so many dialects for us to be able to communicate to our people. Yeah. You know, so at the end of the day, if you're in a hip hop industry and you're struggling to change your accent and sound like something you're not, I urge you please probably, to stop it. Probably a little Wayne or something. Like you know that. what I'm saying? You you will never be a little Wayne. You'll never you'll never be fifty. You might want to touch the reaches they got you know, but you're forgetting your own riches. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So plug in. Represent your village. Represent your hood. Put that slang of your people in your music. And you want to show me you went to school? Use that English representing the context of your people and we'll celebrate that too. You know, this is not a thing of English versus indigenous dialects. Yeah. This is a thing of embodying all the geniusness that God has given you. And as you, you can speak English, use it properly to represent your people. Yeah. <laughs> you can speak your local dialect, use the power in your local dialect to, you know, to transform and communicate messages. So many messages in hip hop have not been communicated in Uganda because everyone is emulating. Yeah. You bring a lot of CDs here from a lot of MCs who are rapping in English. And I will tell you, 80% is not reflective to my grandmother to listen to. Yeah, definitely. In our essence, they're not penetrating and using the power of hip-hop to infiltrate homes, families, governments, and all these other influential things that we need to be changing in Uganda. Remember, <laughs> hip-hop is a powerful voice. We need to use it as the voice it is. Yes, that's what it is. And, uh, well, before we get down with this one, you know, I'm, I'm very sure there is a couple of people out there who need some inspiration. What do you have to say to them probably to do their thing and, uh, you know, uh, probably sometime become somebody somewhat, you, you know, somewhat like, you know, influential or something like that? I mean, the first thing to say is I am somebody. Yeah. You are somebody if you're out there and you're listening. You know, you're tuning in. You want to be a rapper. You want to be an MC. You want to be a beatboxer. You want to be a b-boy. You want to be a visual artist. You want to be a doctor. You want to be a lawyer. You want to be a professor. You are already somebody. Yeah. These are things you're aspiring to be. So you must claim it within. Five, three. And also diligently have the loyalty yeah. not to sell out with yeah. what you love. Utilize your passion to drive you because passion will always give you an element for people to reflect and say he's unique because he loves what it's, it's doing. Yeah. And at the same time, a lot of, especially the young people today in Uganda, whether you're in the music industry or you're in the academic industry or you're in the social sector, you know, everybody's all about the money right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And disregarding the fact that they need to work for excellence. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, because if, I mean, if you work for excellence, that means you're already plugged in where your passion is yeah. and you do the best you can with everything you touch. That means money's right following you behind you. Yeah. But you focus on the money and you give a shorthanded, you know, products. They have no longevity, yeah. they have no legacy, they can't reflect a relevant, you know, product yeah. for the government, for social sectors and corporate sectors to respect hip hop. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I'm calling out and demanding hip hop to stand up and assert itself and demand the respect from what is given and investing in. Definitely, yes. That's why let's get a couple of messages probably on 753 109 109 0792 109 109. Before we get done with this one, and we're well, having lots of messages coming through. This is uh, <laughs> no way, no way. I'm not gonna ask him that. Grab it over to you. 
<laughs> that is crazy. Champion Mavi says, uh, What's up, my baby man? Many rappers are good, but Babaluku is better than them all. And, uh, well, check it out. Let me let me look. I want some questions out here. Yo, Babaluku, what's up? I go over play. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're my mentor. What's going nowadays with you? Well, I guess he's already, you know, gone on to that. And basically, everybody right now hitting you up right now on Facebook and just, you know, hollering, you know, asking, you know, how you doing and all that. I can get to see Kayiga, Lito, uh, you know, Saifas who says, what's up, mentor? How have you been? Uh, you know, basically, that's what is going down right now. You came to the industry blazing. Well, basically, there is not many questions, but uh, also, if I'm free, 109, 109, 0079, 2, 109, 109. Guess you have a question for Babaluku. Or there's something you need to know, or something you feel like you need to express out a little bit here. You just come through. 0753 109 109 0791. It's like my lines are dead. Yeah, I think. Call him what's up. Hello. Hey, how you doing, brother? I'm doing. Hi. Uh, okay, you talk to Babaluku. <laughs> what's going on? Touch my face. Alright. You just having fun at home. <laughs> I do hear what she's saying. All seven five three one zero nine one zero nine zero seven nine two one zero nine one zero nine. In case you have anything you want to, you know, ask Babaluku, just come through and let us know what it is. Some of like, man, Babaluku should be a pasta. <laughs> I'm <laughs> loving this uh, and Mexican yeah. opinions about music. I mean, I'll tell him one thing. You know, it's not about being a pasta. If if the things I say, if you strive for excellence, yeah, and you're passionate about what you do, yeah. The only way you become a successful individual is by evangelizing your cause. That's a good one. Evangelizing. Evangelize what you stand for. Yeah. Okay. When you evangelize, it means you're spiritually, physically, holistically grounded to stand for what you live for. <laughs> so we don't say hip hop for the sake of looking for fame for people to know Babaluku more. Yeah. For you to say, oh, you came to Babaluku, Sean was the dopest, or Babaluku was the best dude. Yeah. You know, no. I evangelize hip hop because hip hop has saved my life. Oh, yeah. I've been able to show so many young people and also share with so many young people I'm being changed. Oh, yeah. The reason I got bigger in my mind and I dream bigger is because hip hop has blessed me to reconnect and reunite yeah. with souls that inspire me. So why can't I evangelize for what, you know, is liberating my soul? Yeah. I understand. No, 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 well, no gimmicks, man. somebody else comes in here is, uh, goes by the name of uh, Flavio who says you're the best inspired to write more and more passion. Well, I was like, you're inspired a uh, you know, couple of cats out here, you know, to try to you know, probably pursue their dream and look it up for. Yes, that's what it is. It's been the main man, but look who in the building. Probably before we get out, I want to show you probably have, uh, you know, something to say to the people before we get down. I mean, definitely before we live here, we love Uganda. We love our people. We love our villages. We love hip hop. You know, so I encourage everyone in the hip hop sector to start understanding that we are a relevant, you know, stakeholder in a society where we live. Yeah. And we are responsible for also being contributors to where we come from. Oh, you yeah. know, and so at the end of the day, you know, before you think of plugging in an in industry just to be famous, yeah. always remember where you come from. Oh, yeah. You know, and always be a part of the progression of your community, all the way from the local council all the way to the highest member or yeah. parliament who stands for you so that you can use hip hop as a voice to transform and change not only yourself but revolutionize those around you. Uganda needs this. You know, South Africa's doing it. Senegal's doing it. A lot of dudes, the, uh, the Arab world is doing it. Yeah. Palestinians are doing it. Ugandans, what are you doing? You know what I mean? It's not enough for me to see you on Channel O, MTV. I sh it don't move us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What moves us is to come into Uganda and we see that hip hoppers are contributors to what's happening back home. To eliminate in the poverty state that's in our own creative realm. You know, so being able to do our own events without being able to beg other people, you know, yeah. because we lack support and we can't fund ourselves and we're always in, in this mindset, oh, we don't have enough, we're hip hoppers, we're underground. Get above ground, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Discipline yourself, rise above ground, and let us build hip hop so that next time when the president is talking about hip hop, or is, is, is thinking of doing another hip hop single, he'll credit and future you too, you know, at the same time. <laughs> Yes, that's what it is. You had it straight out from the main man, but Baluka, thanks for coming through to the building. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having me, bro. Yes, yeah, sure, no problem. But well, the next time going to be going down with the top five smart joints of the week. You just had it for yourself. You need some inspiration. Look out for <laughs> Baluku, probably on Twitter. I, do you usually, are you usually on Twitter? Yeah, there's a Twitter handle, but it's a Bavubuka All Stars Twitter handle. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? So hit it up or hit me up about Baluku Uganda on Facebook. 
If not that, you know what I mean? Google Babaluku, get in touch. My emails is on there. You yeah. know what I mean? And look out for the next revolution of crew happening. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, big up to all the indigenous MCs and big up to the hip hop community in Uganda. And much love to How 100 for, you know, being a part of the historical shift. You know, That's putting the up. voices out there. That's what's up. Thanks for coming through. Yes, catch you up in the next sound. That is that with the top five Mike Jones of the week. The Hangover exclusive interview. Well, thanks for listening to the Hangover Podcast with Siobhan Malcolm. To get me, get on Twitter. That is at King Siobhan. Or Facebook, King Siobhan Malcolm. Be well and take care. It's the King.